This lecture will define what political scientists mean when we use the word concepts. Um, and it will also spell out the process of conceptualization, which is how we define these concepts. So you should pair this lecture with the following one, which will cover how we turn abstract concepts into variables that we can actually study in the real world. So first, let's define what we mean when we say concepts. Concepts are mental abstractions of the underlying ideas behind the political phenomena that we wish to analyze. Okay, um, so that's the general definition of what concepts are. And thinking about how they relate to theory, theory is built around concepts, which we test using variables. So let's take this idea and put it into practice, see what it looks like in actual political science studies. So first of all, let's think about the concept of revolution. Suppose you wanted to study why revolutions arise or why revolutions succeed. So to do that, you have to first define what you actually mean by a revolution. Um, Theta Scotchpole distinguished between political revolutions and social revolutions. So a political revolution um, would be one like the American Revolution. And this is a revolution that is solely a change in the governing system. So the bottom picture here, we have a photo from the American Revolution here. Um, you're not dramatically changing the social and economic order when you have this revolution. You're only changing the political system. And this contrasts with what Theta Scotchpole was interested in, which is a uh, social revolution. So the social revolution, you have a transformation in both the political system and the social and economic system. So the, the upper left photo is of Lenin from the Bolshevik Revolution, uh, which doesn't just depose the old uh, czarist system you have in Russia. It implements a completely new communist model. And then on the, the right hand side, we have a photo from the French Revolution which is not only changing the political system, but it's really um, liberating France from a feudal model. And so this is really changing the social order as well. So likewise, if you want to talk about war as your concept, you want to say study the causes of war. Maybe you want to do a study in line with the democratic peace theory. So to do that, you have to say, what do I mean when I say war? What is war? Um, this involves some judgment calls. So first of all, we see this first left image from World War I. This is obviously a war if you're gonna define war as um, conflict that is between two nation states. Um, we have two militaries fighting against each other. The second image is on the, the right hand side on the top is from the Vietnam War. And this is one in which the US fought an armed insurgency. Um, so it's not two militaries of nation states fighting each other. And in fact, this was never declared a war by Congress. So if you include in your definition that it had to be something that was legally passed by the legislature, then Vietnam would not be considered a war. But most people do consider it a war. Um, finally, let's think about the bottom picture. This is a photo of 9-11. Uh, what about the war on terror? It was Al-Qaeda that was at war with the United States um, in the war on terror uh, on this 9-11 uh, event when they flow, flew planes into the World Trade Center. So is there a war there when you have um, not even a large guerrilla group, but a smaller terrorist group that's fighting a country? Um, so does that count? The underlying point here is that um, you need to think about what your definition will include and what it won't include. How would you lump uh, empirical cases together? Is the war on terror the same kind of thing as World War I? Conceptualization is the process of actually going about and defining your concept. So when you say war, when you say revolution, what do you mean? Um, what does this entail? And often in political science, um, concepts are fairly complex that it can't simply be a one sentence definition. Um, say in economics, you could say, well, what is uh, my, my concept is economic growth and have uh, that definition simply be the growth in GDP in, in the country. Um, so often in political science, a lot of the concepts we're interested are more complex. They have multiple dimensions. Um, so dimensions would be different lines on which you might have variation. 
these are the criteria that would be involved in defining a concept. So for example, Theta Scotchpole's concept of social revolution involves two dimensions. One involves a change in state structures, that you have to have a reinvention of the political order. And the second dimension is that you have to have a change in social structures, a reorganization of social hierarchies and patterns. So it's not simply that she has a definition, is that there's two um, dimensions that are involved. And you should think about how your concept would vary. Uh, for a scotch bowl, you could have no revolution, or you could have a political revolution, or you could have a social revolution. So depending on how those dimensions match up, um, so you should think about what are the different types that you might hypothetically see out there.